good morning well midday so good day how are you since we last spoke um, because I actually recorded more than two two weeks ago uh, because the last time that the video was released we were in UK so I have pre-recorded it so it can come out uh, while we are away but uh, since we last spoke um, we went to UK to take our son for his studies and um, we settled him in. Mario and I went uh, just for a couple of days. It was only four days. Just enough to, to settle everything, to open bank account, uh, his UK number, get the stuff that he needs for the dorm, just to organize everything. And, and then we left and uh, we left him there. So far, so good. Um, he likes it. I like the place. I'm happy with uh, with the town. I felt good leaving him there, but um, but now I have to get used to him being so far away. So um, I'll show you a few clips from uh, UK when we took him, and uh, I'll see you back to I'll see you after that to show you. I actually have uh, quite a few projects um, to show you today. In the previous video, I was uh, showing you a clip at the very beginning of the very rainy skies and I was hoping for rain. Well, the rain didn't come that day and uh, it didn't come for a while after that. But then when we got uh, back from, uh, from England, the day started still hot, but we got the first 
one, two days of uh, being below 30 degrees centigrade. So that was nice, a bit, you know, you can breathe a bit better. And uh, we got uh, some really nice and heavy rain. I finished, um, I finished uh, the cocoon cardigan. I was reading all your comments and uh, overwhelmingly people were saying to finish it uh, with uh, black sleeves. And I was thinking, even though initially I was thinking like, oh, I might not wear it and so on, that I did so much work that only the sleeves had stayed uh, to do them and the sleeves were quite short. So I thought, you know what, let me finish it and then see how I like it and see if I'm going to wear it. It was not it was not a lot of work. It took me less than two days to do the sleeves because most of it was done. It's very difficult to show you the, the cardigan like this. It does fold easily. Look, it folds <laughs> like that. But uh, it's difficult to show you how it looks because how it would be worn. It would be like that. I, um, I record it when I'm standing so you can uh, see it. So either I'm in inserting it. No, I should insert it right now as I'm talking. So you can see how it looks uh, while I'm standing. And I paired it with... Um, I was also telling you that I wasn't sure if I'm going to keep it. Because I did this collar in black. And most of my uh, t-shirts that I wear are black. So I didn't know if there is if you are going to be able to see the contrast or the differences in black. But then I thought I have some other clothes as well. So I continued making it and maybe I'm going to wear it with other clothes like uh, this shirt or um, I have a few more that would go nicely with this. So the, the cardigan, the rectangle that I did was done uh, in my hand spun in brioche stitch. So this is the hand spun that I, that I used. And I have done it in a brioche stitch. The collar and the sleeves I did in drop snort. Now what would work perfectly is for my hand spun, I have used 4 mm needle, but drop snored is 3 mm needle. But that kind of worked perfectly because when I was picking up the stitches all around in order to do the collar, because I was picking up the rows really, um, mm -hmm. from what I can remember, but basically the, the gaps were a bit further apart and also because I was using 4 mm needles. But you know when you're picking up, you're, you're not supposed to pick up every stitch if you're going with the same size needle because then you get more fabric. But because I had uh, one needle uh, size smaller, so I had three millimeter for the black yarn, for the drop snored, I was able just to pick up every, every row, every stitch, and it didn't uh, bunch up. So that worked great uh, in that uh, sense. So I think that maybe if I ever need to do that again and pick up the, the rows, I might do it in a yarn smaller because it, it worked well. I didn't really have to count how many I have to skip or worry about. I just picked up every, every stitch and it worked well. So yeah, I'm going to have this now for, this is uh, actually really good for transition because for when it's really cold, I don't think it's very practical because it stays very open uh, at, at the front. Um, you, you can't really close it unless maybe I get a toggle and I close it, but I think it's perfect for, uh, for a transitional weather. So we'll see how I wear it this autumn. It's still very hot, so I'm not... Um, I don't think I'm going to be wearing it anytime soon. The purple jumper that I was working on, um, so the purple jumper that I was working on, I didn't touch it. Um, I didn't touch it 
since last time and that's okay because I really had uh, some other things to to work on but just to remind you this is uh, the yarn collective look I'm going to put all the yarns that I have links to I'm going to hopefully put them I'm going to rewatch this and I'm going to put them in order as I spoke hopefully and I'll put them where I bought them from so you can also do the research in your area or if you have it available anywhere closer to you so this is the in and out raglan that I was working on um, in fiber collective the color I think it's delphinium but I'm not sure I took the tags off I didn't work on uh, I didn't work on that one I'm just gonna come back to it maybe in a couple of weeks because I had um, you know you remember the list that I was telling you that I have for uh, for presents uh, birthday presents and Christmas presents that I have the list throughout the year so for this year the, as far as birthdays are concerned, I only have one more to make and that is for my brother-in-law. His birthday is in November. So I thought I'm going to start on that, on his uh, jumper. And uh, in case, because I'm drafting it, my sister gave me, I asked her to give me his, uh, his uh, jumper that uh, he's, he's wearing normally, the commercially bought one. And then, based on my gauge, I was going to calculate and um, follow the shape. I didn't use any pattern. Now, I don't know if I should have, but that's why I started now. So, in case it doesn't come out well, I still have time to rework it. It's, it's not going too slow because I'm working on uh, four millimeter needles. But the combination of yarn is um, really interesting. Let me bring... So, I'm drafting the raglan uh, by myself. I'm drafting how many stitches I needed for the collar and for the sleeves. But I think I made a uh, mistake somewhere because by the time I reached the number of stitches on the sleeves that I calculated, I realized that the body was too small. I didn't reach the number of the stitches in the body as much as I needed. So right now I stopped increasing for the sleeves and I'm going to increase on the body to come to the number of stitches that I have calculated previously that I need to match the commercial jumper. But the yarn that I'm using is so I have a lot of drops flora. This is in very light gray, but I have in uh, different colors as well. And I told you before, whenever I tried knitting with drops flora alone, I don't really like it. I don't enjoy the process. And the yarn is beautiful. It's soft, it's, it's nice, it's not scratchy at all. However, the process of knitting with it, I don't enjoy it. It feels not stretchy enough. And when I see like this, I don't see the difference much from other yarns. It's just while I'm knitting it, I don't necessarily enjoy the process. And I have a lot of it in different, in different colors. So I did uh, some swatches holding a few yarns together. Now this is fingering weight. So what I did in this case, I held one strand of Drops Flora with uh, this mohair blend that I told you I have loads of them on cones and also a very very thin thread yarn which is merino and angora I have two cones of this and I had them for ages I think I bought these from um, yarn on cone or uh, yarn on cone or yarns on cone I'll put it down in uh, in in UK I don't know if they still have this but you can check uh, if you live in UK you can check them out so these three these three yarns created a fabric that is really pleasure to knit with and I'm using four millimeters uh, for the for the jumper let me bring you bring it closer for you to see it's a beautiful marled kind of headered fabric I gave him a few samples of different uh, swatches of different colors, which ones, you know, to choose from. Sorry, I'm just putting them on the side so I know what I finished talking about. 
So I gave him a few um, uh, swatches to see of drops flora held with uh, these two yarns, different colors to, to see which one he would prefer and he chose this one. So that's the one I went ahead with. But how just slight alterations to the yarn or just holding another one can really change the complete feel and look of, of the yarn. And now, I mean, m my mind is racing. I have so many, so much drops flora, and now I'm really glad that I'm gonna get to use it because as, I w as it was before, I don't think that I would knit uh, things only with it. I tried a few times, but as I said, I wasn't, I wasn't very happy. So hopefully this will work out so I don't have to re-knit it. But uh, that's why I wanted to focus on that uh, so I have enough time to correct anything if it needs uh, correcting. I did start another jumper and uh, this is what I took to UK with me. I wanted something on small needles just to kind of keep my mind occupied because saying bye to Nicola obviously was, uh, was difficult. And I thought it was a good idea at the moment. I still think it's a good idea, but I don't know what possessed me. I cast on a jumper in the construction that I have never tried. Again, I'm not following a pattern on 2.25 millimeter needles, which is US, I think, one, size one needles. And it's going very, very slow. Now, I don't mind the fact that it's going slow, but I have never tried this construction before. And I have the idea in my mind, but fingers crossed it works, because if it doesn't, maybe I really should have tried it in a thicker yarn, so you know, I can see where the construction will work. Okay, so here it is. It's same on both sides. The yarns that I'm using are beautiful beautiful alpaca one from Isayer. I got that last year when we went uh, for a trip to UK and Norway and it's in this um, green gray brown color. Um, it definitely has a tint of green but it's so muted it's very muted and this is a lace weight yarn. Um, so I didn't want to hold that double I wanted to try to make even smaller, um, to uh, even, would that be a smaller gauge or larger gauge? Um, I wanted to make the fabric even thinner because the idea is I would like to create uh, some garments that I can wear for a longer period of uh, time in the year here in Cyprus. But because it's quite hot here, thick jumpers can be only worn for a certain amount of months. So I would like to make some, uh, some projects. Maybe I'm gonna try plant-based yarn, but I'm not really looking forward to that. Although I do have a very large cone of tassa silk in uh, lace weight as well. But I wanted to try, you know, these one, this one that I have. So I paired the Isayer, uh, Isayer alpaca one with a thread, thread merino. Now this thread is, um, it's Zegna Barufa, if you know, you know the quality of Zegna Barufa yarn, and I got it from um, yarnsfromitaly.com. Occasionally they do have Zegna Barufa cones, and when they do, I do get them. So this one is, so the, uh, the alpaca is lace weight, which is 800 meters per 100 grams. And this one is 1,800 meters per 100 grams. So this dark green, muted green and black, the fabric that they have created is this. The idea that I wanted, um, I didn't do any kind of shaping at the back, so it's the same front and back. I have just cast on 100 on 2.25 millimeter needles. I have cast on 160 stitches for the neck, did a ribbing for a few centimeters, and then I'm increasing only on two points. Do you hear that outside? I think some cats are fighting. 
hope it's not one of mine um, because my neighbor has lots of cats as well and occasionally they do come inside our yard but um, we hear cats fighting all the time here um, so I cast on 160 stitches did ribbing for a couple of centimeters and now I'm increasing just in two points on each of the shoulders and I'm increasing from both sides front and back so four stitches increased uh, each time I'm increasing every other row because I want a really slow fall of the garment the idea that I have is that I'm going to do that until it reaches just underneath my sleeve then I'm going to split for the sleeves make the opening that I can pick up later like a drop shoulder but this is like a really drop shoulder now this is all in my mind and I really hope it works because otherwise it's going to be so much work um, to get it finished so once I do that then I'll either leave it that with but what I think I'm going to do I'm going to start decreasing now I don't know if I'm going to decrease from both sides to be an even decrease like proper bat sleeves or am I going to increase just on one side so it's a bit asymmetrical because I do have one store-bought jumper that I love the shape I'm not really following exactly that but that one is a bit asymmetrical and I do like uh, how that fits it's a very flattering uh, it's a very flattering look I am in no hurry to finish this I work on it you know whenever I work on it this is going to be a long-term project and if it works then I'm going to always have one of that very very thin yarn you know on the go that I can just work like a long time project like a blanket really but end up having more lightweight uh, garments that I can wear more throughout the year and I can extend the season of uh, me wearing my hand knits Okay, give me a sec, I got tangled here. I am looking forward to this and I really hope that it works because I do like the fabric a lot. Now, okay, I have to be quiet with this. My two cousins came, uh, came to Cyprus and they, they are here this week. And one of them has her birthday now this weekend, which we're going to celebrate here in my house. So I thought I have to go and get, buy her something. I was thinking to go to the mall. And then I remembered that I have upstairs, uh, I have three pairs of sock tubes that I, that I knitted. Um, I showed you many times. The way that I knit is basically I do the cuff, for about uh, three and a half centimeters or four. Then I do the leg, and when that tube uh, measures about 30 centimeters, I start decreasing for the toe. And I keep those tubes there if I don't need to make any socks for myself in that moment. I keep those tubes there, and then as I need them, I just kind of measure the size that, uh, that I need, and I cut in the heel there, make the heel and I have that size sock so I have three pairs uh, of those tubes upstairs and I thought oh it would be a really nice idea to make her two pairs and she's pregnant as well so now for the winter in Belgrade because it gets much much colder than it does here I thought I'm gonna make her to cut in the heel uh, I asked my mom what her shoe size is and both the both of the girls they have the same shoe size girls women um, so I'm going to for the one that her, her birthday is this weekend I'm going to cut in the heel and give her two pairs of socks and if I have time hopefully I'm going to do the same on the third one and give it to my other cousin so she has for the winter I have finished one already I didn't block it because uh, she has a larger foot than me so I just put it on a sock blocker for you to see this is uh, this is the tube that I already had and then I cut in the heel and just um, I just created the heel the yarn for the tube that I have used 
is I don't know if it's exactly this colorway maybe it looks like it it's drops the light I have used that together with one of these uh, mohairs for uh, mohair blends for the whole body of the sock and then for the heel, what I have done is I had this little leftover of Cascade Heritage, which is a superwash sock yarn. So for the heel, I have used that color, again held uh, with mohair, because I have the, this little bit that uh, stayed and it didn't really use a lot of yarn. And it's this burgundy mixed uh, with mohair but I think it matches the sock, um, the sock perfectly. I know they're different because that's how the, the skein of yarn uh, goes. But I think, they're, I think they're lovely. So I did finish this one yesterday. And I'm going to fin do the other one today. I still have a couple of days until her birthday. The ones that I'm going to do today or start doing them today are these ones. This is the tube that I was telling you about. So it's just a tube closed at the bottom with the toe, but it doesn't have a heel. So I'm just going to measure where I, where I, until where I need it to cut the heel in and just build the heel. So this, I think it's, um, it's a combination of, uh, I think this is the yarn that I have dyed with, with food coloring just uh, the yarn that I got from World of Wool and that I have dyed it with food coloring and I held it with uh, mohair and the cuff and the toe are undyed yarn held with white mohair blend which I'm going to do the heel in. I don't think this matters actually if it uh, focuses or not. So I'm going to do the heel in um, undyed yarn and white mohair. So those two will be the ones for her. And the other ones for my other cousin, if I have time, are, are these. This I held a strand of that mohair with uh, Cascade Heritage in blue. And I think I'm going to make the heel with that brown mohair and uh, brown Cascade Heritage that again, I have some left over. So I have quite a few of these Cascade Heritage that are just like less than a skein. So I'm not going to start a new pair of socks. And so it's perfect to use it up like this. And um, also, you know, even though this does have nylon, but I think the mohair blend will give it even more strength, considering <coughs> that Cascade Heritage is a superwash. So that combining these two will give me a brown heel, which I think will go really nice with uh, these ones. So I hope I have time to do that because I would like to give it and give one to her as well. I have finished um, some scrappy socks. Again, we were talking about now about Cascade Heritage and the little leftovers that I have. So I had some leftovers, very little bit, like just a few grams of a few different colors of Cascade Heritage and also of uh, West Yorkshire Spinners, I think autumn leaves for ply. So nothing enough that I can make one project out of, uh, out of each of these scraps. So what I decided to do is to do helical knitting and uh, just use them up. And this is how the socks uh, worked up. They're very, um, they're very retro, very 70s. Um, but you know what, from something that was not, that I was not able to, to use the amounts of yarn, I actually got a pair of socks with a very little bit of yarn left from, from unusable scraps, I got a pair of socks. These are for me. And uh, 
I'd like to you I I like to start putting that um, as uh, as something that I do at all times always to have uh, one of those uh, socks on the go so I just use up these little bits and pieces as well I did the star and it's kind of perfect now for October as well so while I'm working on my brother-in-law's jumper I can work on uh, those socks as well and the, the other the other jumper on very thin needles it can stay and I can just work on it in the background but I did start last night on another one like that so I'm using, I showed you in the last episode, the socks that I knitted for my son for UK. Uh, they were using Regia and I held them together with the mohair blend. So now without the mohair blend, the leftovers from those socks, I decided to use again in helical knitting. I did the white uh, cuff in the undyed yarn and then I have striped it with as much as I had of the brown from Regia and now I'm striping it, micro striping it with this um, sand beige but it doesn't really show much the, the contrast however that's fine, that's just fine with me um, and then maybe the heel because I will have enough yarn maybe the heel I can do in uh, in Cascade Heritage. Okay, um, I'm really looking forward to finishing lots of these little things and also socks bring me comfort at the moment. As I said, kind of perfect for uh, Soctober. And I was also thinking, I have, I have a lot of yarn and my organization is not that great really i have it everywhere it's all in the boxes but the boxes are everywhere they're pretty boxes but they're everywhere i have them in my studio upstairs i have them here in the living room i have some in the basket on my side here so i would really like to start organizing yarn and um, obviously using up what i have we're going to barcelona knit so i'm going to buy some there as well so what I was thinking, maybe I can make a video, um, a few videos showing certain sections of my stash, of my collection. And maybe now because we are, well, I'm working a lot with socks, maybe I can start with uh, first showing you my sock yarn and that will help me as well. So I can remind myself exactly what I have and maybe organize myself like that as well. I don't know if that is going to be like a proper video in two weeks time or is it going to be like a bonus video maybe next week but if I release a video next week that will that will throw me out of the algorithm and then um, I don't know if you're gonna be notified so I'm gonna let you know in Instagram if I uh, if I release uh, a bonus video about uh, my socks uh, stock yarn stash that will come out uh, if it comes out next week and uh, I wanted to, oh, I bought shoes. I know it has nothing to do with yarn, but this is, this is a vlog about me and about the things that I make. But also I want to start telling you about the things that I like and that they bring me joy. Shoes are one of them. And I have a weakness for stilettos. It's a little bit harder to, for me to wear them now. I used to dance all night in them. Now I'm not so used to it, but I'm determined now that as the kids are a bit older and I'm gonna be, start going out a bit more, I'm determined to get back into wearing my stilettos, which I do. So I bought three pairs of shoes and also two pairs of shoes and one pair of boots. Also, Nicola was leaving, so I ordered them a few weeks before and they arrived just before we went for UK and they did make me feel better just this much. I think I recorded some uh, footage of the shoes, but uh, if I don't have that, give me a second, I'm just going to bring out the shoes to show you. Okay, so the first pair are these boots 
Now the heel is a bit thicker, a little bit thicker than my stilettos because I figured if I'm going to be wearing boots it's going to be probably while it's raining and stuff and I really don't want to be slipping. So look at this detail. How beautiful is this detail? This is the brand that uh, I'm trying out for the first time, the leather. I think it's called Gaudi and uh, We'll see, I mean, and Gaudi kind of perfectly goes with uh, Barcelona, but I don't think I'm going to take them to Barcelona with me. I just think I'm going to take my Dr. Martins because, you know, we're going to be walking and standing a lot. And, uh, you know, if I take the boots, there will be less space for yarn. So I got those boots. I got a pair of stilettos from Michael Kors. These are leather as well because I do have stilettos like this in beige that I got, uh, I think they're LK Bennett. I got them last year in, uh, in London, in Selfridges, but I didn't have in black. So now I have in black as well. And I got from Ted Baker, these are not leather, these are material, but look at this. How pretty is this? Is it focusing? It's got to focus. You've got to see these shoes. Aren't they pretty? I don't know if you care, but I really love my shoes. So you might be seeing them. Actually, one of you, um, some, some videos ago, Rhonda, I think, Unruly Knitter on, uh, on Instagram. One time I mentioned that I like simple clothes and kick-ass shoes and uh, she wrote to me, she goes, hopefully we're going to see some of your kick-ass shoes. I think it's her, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so maybe I'm going to do one time a little fashion shoes of, uh, all, uh, fashion show of all my shoes, especially, especially for her. I wanted to, now to finish, I wanted to do some uh, questions and answers from all the beautiful questions that uh, you have asked me uh, two videos ago when I asked for your help. But I think this video is long enough and I'm going to leave it at this. However, I was, uh, I was asked and uh, it was suggested in those comments, maybe I can do yarn reviews, uh, a lady asked me. I would love to do yarn reviews. Now I don't know how uh, how much I can actually review it as far as the wear goes because you know we don't wear them long enough in order to see how uh, how well they wear. But I already have so much yarns that uh, I'll happily t talk more about it. The ones that I have as I'm going through, as I was telling you now, and linking them. But I also wanted to, I ordered from Lovecrafts, but I'm sure those brands will be available uh, in other places, except maybe one. I have ordered, now, uh, it's mostly for you guys, but I'm definitely going to use it. As the gift uh, giving season is approaching, I wanted to find some uh, affordable yarn that is good quality, that is easy to care of, so like acrylic wool blends that is going to be perfect for gift knitting. And the pattern that I have in my mind is um, Saturday Shrug by Jackie Rose from, Jack, uh, from Katty Jack's Knits. And that is a perfect, I have knitted one for myself and in my hand spun yarn, but I thought it would be perfect present obviously for, uh, and, and to have them, the way that I have sock tubes, to have them also prepared so whenever you need a present because you don't have to worry about the size. But I wanted to find some uh, affordable, nice yarns. So I ordered a few different ones and I still didn't get them. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see and try it out and let you guys know so you can check out those yarns or anything similar like that that we can find some good quality, affordable yarns that are perfect for uh, gift knitting. I will let you know when that arrives and show you, and then I'm gonna try knitting with them 
So no Q and A's now, but I will take that uh, suggestion on board and uh, and do some yarn reviews. In fact, I actually got excited about that. So that's that. I I hope you're well. I am well, surprisingly. Um, considering that I was panicking so much with uh, Nicola leaving but uh, he's doing well we spoke we speak um, pretty much every day and uh, he's doing well the thing that uh, has to change is that he has to get used to the time difference because UK is two hours behind us and two nights in a row he called me four o'clock in the morning because it was two o'clock his time he knows I'm awake around two o'clock but he didn't realize that that's four o'clock in the night, my time. And as the phone rang, my legs cut. And when I saw his name, I just got so scared. I couldn't calm down for the rest of the night. So he has to change, change that bit. Last night we told him, I said, don't call me. Do not call me at four o'clock in the morning. But he's doing well, so I'm doing well as well. Thank you for watching. Um, Thank you for all your comments. I got back into answering the comments of the previous video. The one where I asked you to get, ask me questions, though, that is the only one that I have skipped. And if I release that video uh, next week about my uh, sock yarn stash, I will let you know on Instagram. If not, I'll see you in two weeks time. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.